the triune God. The doctrine of the Trinity as It's the noun God that you have used. There is one body and one spirit. These verses in Isaiah there, you can, you can pick up the, the three members. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, friends. I do hope that you enjoyed our first, I believe, podcast series. And today we are here, happy to introduce our second topic, the Trinity. We know that it will be a blessing and uh, for you as well as us that are here. So wherever you are at this moment, uh, I, I pray and ask that you will have a good time. And, but before we do go further, um, let's just close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, thank you for being our Father. Thank you, Lord, that we can call you friend. Thank you, Father, that we can call you brother. Thank you, Father, that you are intimately involved in our lives every day. And Father, as we open your word and discuss this wonderful, marvelous topic, Lord, I pray that it might be a blessing and might, uh, might your Holy Spirit uh, empower us, Father, and bring to light things that we don't understand. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Pastor Ezra, today we are talking about the Trinity, the Godhead, um, we looked at the Holy Scriptures the last time, and now we we in being introduced to God. Um, and then in the next podcast, we'll deal more specifically in detail with each member, a person of the Godhead. But yeah, today we're looking at the Trinity. So maybe you want to introduce our guest. Yes, yes, yes. We are not two, we are three. <laughs> so... Um, uh, I'm going to ask you to maybe just share something about yourself, but allow me also to share something about uh, the man sitting yes. here in front of me. This is Pastor, uh, I call him Pastor, he's got many other titles, <laughs> and we'll get to maybe some titles, things in, in our discussion here. Um, but this is Pastor Leander Chalice, um, he's uh, very dear and near to my heart. Uh, not only because he's a member here, but he also that he lectured me. Mm. So, uh, uh, but we can, he, he's, I'm sure he's going to share him all that. So, he's Pastor Leander Chalice and uh, he's a member here at Silverly, so of course. Um, but Pastor, uh, maybe, uh, maybe tell us a bit more about yourself. Well, I can clear that up in a moment just by telling you, you can call me Leander. Okay. And that's <laughs> I prefer that. Name Leander. It's a beautiful name, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, if you want to say pastor, that's fine. It's a very respectable term, honorable term. Mm -hmm. um, but Leander is fine with me. And um, I'm just glad that I could be a member of Silverleaf. Uh, we have been in South Korea for about 11 years. And then we returned, and this was one of the first churches that we met, and we met the members here and finally decided to have our membership uh, here at Silverleaf. Originally, we intended to go to the All Nations Church, mm -hmm. because when I was a student here at Haldeberg, we uh, were of the original members okay. of the All Nations Church. Okay. Um, however, when we came, there was really, uh, they didn't have any programs for the children. Yeah, and our yeah. children were still small, you know, when we brought them. So we then decided to come over to Silverleaf, and here we met a whole family. Uh, that was wonderful. Um, well, we're still members here. It's just that COVID has been keeping us away, and the whole family has been sick. And we tried mm -hmm. to get back, you know, to Silverleaf, uh, knowing that our children should really continue the practice as Jesus did, mm -hmm. going to the temple every Sabbath. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but sometimes it's um, with, due to the COVID problem we have, uh, we, well, that is another thing that still needs to be sorted out, so I wouldn't go further into it. <laughs> but we're glad to have you as part of our church family. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Greek, and thank you, Pastor Souls. No, thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful having you and your family here. Uh, uh, they mean a great deal to us. Um, but maybe just briefly, um, uh, tell, us, tell us a bit more about your Christian journey. Um, uh, we're always interested to hear of how God has led yes. uh, our people yes. so they get to sit in this chair. <laughs> okay, I, Maybe just briefly. I'll tell you a little. Um, I was originally employed at the Department of Labor. Okay. So I used to work with all these unemployed persons, and fortunately they didn't have COVID at that time. <laughs> um, but I was at the same time studying law. <clears throat> so I was... Uh, preparing to become a prosecutor. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, I th decided, look, I really want to lash out on these criminals. Uh, the, mm -hmm. But then I also felt a calling. Mm -hmm. And the calling was really to, to serve as a minister, as a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, because you interact with people, um, and then you take the boss's time. Because when they come and they're unemployed, you speak to them about Christ and you communicate with them on some of the different doctrines that we teach, that we preach. And I realized that really I am taking up the boss's time here. Uh, because I would uh, have time for a, a few of the Jehovah's Witnesses and at least two of them finally accepted the faith. Um, but the thing is, I realize you cannot forever debate on this topic. Uh, and debating people into the faith is not the best thing. There, there is something better than that that you can do. Just make sure that you um, introduce the person in, uh, as a friend or learn to know the person better. And friendship evangelism mm -hmm. is really what works. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the greatest argument in favor of the gospel mm -hmm. is definitely a loving and lovable Christian. Mm -hmm. So then I just uh, carried on from there, decided to come to Helderberg College. You needed to be full-time in ministry. <laughs> yes, I really decided I want mm -hmm. to come full-time. And then on my decision, I came and my brother also followed me. Uh, and also, also I would studying theology. Also theology. Okay. And finally, he ended up in New Testament, and I ended up in Old Testament. <laughs> uh, there is an age gap of five years, uh, but we also had a nephew that came, and uh, Pastor Chandel Pennicut. He Have also met him before. Yes, <laughs> he then also uh, came to study, but I would not say that. We are responsible, or we were the influence that he came, but he decided to come study as well. So then um, from there, I think it's after my first year, I really thought, man, is uh, pastoral ministry is such a wonderful ministry. It's such a wonderful calling. Um, will I be able to handle it? Because here you have to be a, you have to do, the general approach to work. Mm -hmm. You're not going to specialize in one particular field, say, all right, I'm going to focus on counseling, or I will just mm -hmm. work on Bible studies, or you have to do everything. You have to mm -hmm. preach, you have to teach, you have to counsel, etc. And I think perhaps I realized that I might not have all those skills. Um, so the first year I was here for pastoral ministry, and the second year, I said, no, man, I think perhaps I'm going more toward the academic side because okay. I really love the Bible languages and Bible translations and so on. But at the same time, I realized that in pastoral ministry, you still, whether you go into that field or not, if you're going to be, become a theologian and work as in the area of theology, you still have to make contact with people by means of <laughs> preaching by means of counseling, um, but I thought, no, in the first place, I need to specialize. And that's my reason why I then went for further study at Stellenbosch 
I, also, I did some studies at um, the uh, um, Hebrew University and also a little bit of study at Harvard University. Yeah. Yes. It's nice to hear. I, I never <laughs> knew that journey. Okay. Beautiful. Right. So, well, today we are talking about the Trinity or the Godhead. And I thought to start off, we can share our fundamental belief. Mm. Um, so let me read it here. It is on the screen. So our fundamental belief states, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. God is immortal, all-powerful, all-knowing, above all, and ever-present. He is infinite and beyond human comprehension, yet known through his self-revelation. God, who is love, is forever worthy of worship, adoration, and service by the whole creation. And then there are a whole list of scriptures that are also supplied as well. So that's our, our theme, our discussion. We're going to have a conversation around that. And it's a very, very relevant um, discussion at this time um, here in South Africa yes. and even for, I think, the past 10 years or, or more, um, I think you would know better on, you know, there's been a lot of discussion around this, this theme. So, yeah, maybe, maybe let's, let's get into it. Any, where should we start when we start talking about, you know, the Trinity or the Godhead? Well, Pastor Greg, I would say that even the reading that you've given there, um, there's one word or term, actually it's more a common noun, it's the noun God that you have used. And uh, it seems that uh, God is the, having used that term, um, our difficulty immediately commences. Because now we, when we say God, are we speaking of the Father? Are we speaking of the Son? Or are we speaking of the Holy Spirit? And I think... Um, in answer to um, most of our difficult problems we have in terms of the Trinity or the Triune God or the Godhead, um, I think we would clarify um, most of it if we can perhaps use a Bible that would bring out the names of God. Okay. Because every time you use the English Bible, it would say God. And then you don't know, is that the Father, is that the Son, or is that the Holy Spirit? But if you would use a Bible, and there are quite a few, I think, uh, if you use um, some of those Bibles, you will then discover the name is clarified. It's clearly stated that it is Yahweh, or it is um, Yahweh Ropeka, or it is Elohim, or it is uh, Theos or any of those terms. But now, every time we just see God and God and God, we do not know exactly which one of the three is being referred to or whether all three are being referred to. So, uh, this is why it's so good to have these conversations because we can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So, maybe you can share from, from personally with us, you know, how has this, you know, understanding those names of God helped you to understand this, this discussion, maybe you can, you can share with us some of that journey because something that I've appreciated is your understanding of the, the biblical languages. And I, and I can see the, the helpfulness of that. Um, so yeah, maybe you can share some, some things that can be insightful for us as we, as we talk about the Trinity. Yes, Pastor Greg. Um, yeah, the first thing that I'd like to mention is Genesis 1. And, you know, we go directly into Genesis 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And um, in Genesis 1, verse 1, the name God is used there, mm -hmm. or the, uh, the noun. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, God created the heavens and the earth. Um, and then verse 2 says, and the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. 
Then God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. And there was light. Um, and immediately, it makes me think uh, concerning some of the interpretations that we can run into. Uh, one of it is that if you take verse 2, it says the Spirit of God. And uh, we most likely would think that that is the Holy Spirit. Um, we would have the first word there, God, and we would then think that's God the Father. And then we would have verse 3, then God said, let there be light, and we would think that is Jesus Christ, because he's the light of the world. Um, but that would be uh, false. That would be wrong interpretations. That would be eisegetical rather than uh, exegetical. So we would not be taking out of the text. We would be putting things in the text that's not there. We need God's word to, sp to speak for itself. It must, yes, yes, correct. And to speak to us. Uh, so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth already comes in the form of plurality where God is Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And we know with the Elohim, the, the, the last three, or rather two, because um, the, the one is the, well, we refer to it as the Chirak Yod, if you can recall. Um, and the last um, consonant is the Mem. So you have the Chirak Yod and the Mem. That makes it plural. So Elohim is plural. You're saying Other, God, the word for God here is in plural is form. It's in the plural form, okay. yes. And then uh, if we go to the second one, and the Spirit of God was hovering over okay. the surface of the waters. Is it going to be interesting? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I know traditionally we have been using that as the Holy Spirit. Uh, I always am a little amazed at that because I thought, but what is the Holy Spirit doing on the surface of the waters. I know it's not my business, uh, you know, when you deal with God. But for me, it's very troublesome that the Holy Spirit is going to deal with the waters, hovering above the waters. But the Hebrew word, there are nuances. So that word ruach can mean spirit, but it can also mean breath. It can also mean wind and air. And I've seen there okay. are some translations where, uh, from very renowned scholars where they would say, and the wind from God was hovering over the waters. Whereas in my case, I prefer um, what Psalm 33 would give us. In Psalm 33, as from verse 6. Also speaking of creation. Yes, yes, yes. You remember that well. And 33 verse 6 reads, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their lights. Mm -hmm. He gathers the waters and the sea together as a heap. Now there it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. Mm -hmm. So I would understand that verse 2 would then read that there uh, the earth was formless and desolate, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the breath of God was gently moving on the surface of the waters. So then, as he was creating, as he was creating, okay. that the he, just by breathing, he is actually creating. Because we know that uh, that is how God formed uh, the universe and what we now see. He spoke. And it was done. And it was done. Yes. And let's read that. That's just three verses later in Psalm oh, yes. 33, verse You read nine. it for us, please. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Oh, yes. God's word is powerful. Very powerful. So yeah. what, I, what I like about this, I think there's even a lesson we can learn. We need to compare Scripture with Scripture. Yes. Allow Scripture to interpret itself. Correct. And um, to see that, you know, the word used here. So, see, where else is that word used and how, how can we understand it? Um, like you're saying, the word spirit can be breath, can be wind, can be air. That's, that's interesting. Yes, yes. But, but most the uh, understanding of all this, is there a possibility of um, confusion to come in? Um, is, there, is, there, is there a possibility for 
even further um, study at times because we know that sometimes you study wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. Just because you're studying doesn't mean it's the right thing. You correct, study. correct. Um, but now, how can we make sure that we, when we do go into this, we have, um, I guess, a more practical way of understanding eternity, not taking mm -hmm. away from the fact that um, we also, when we speak about the Trinity or the God or the three co-eternal persons, that it's a difficult subject to understand in itself. Yes, yes. It's, it's not easy. Yes. I mean, yeah, you can believe it, but if you try and explain it, you'll probably go it, mad. <laughs> no, certainly. That is <laughs> <And> correct. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, so how do, we, how do we get to that point where we tread, I guess, a, a safe line? I think, first of all, the safe line would be just what we did now by comparing Scripture with Scripture. Mm -hmm. And I think that is an Adventist approach. Mm -hmm. We believe you have to take the one Scripture. Also, there should be other Scriptures to back it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and if not, I think perhaps there we will also use what we have as the writings of Ellen G. Yes. White for further guidance and enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I think that is the safer way to go. Um, the, the, the third one we have here is then God said, let there be light. And it says, and there was light. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, we know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, mm -hmm. but we cannot now apply it in this text. <laughs> so everywhere where there's light in the Bible, see, we that can't is now Jesus say Christ. that is Jesus. Okay. Correct. Because it goes further to say, then God saw that the light was good. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have to to understand the word light as Jesus Christ, then it means then God saw that Jesus was good and God separate, sorry, separated the light from the darkness. That means God separated Jesus from the darkness. That means and Jesus was in the darkness. Something like that. Or, or some, uh, some interpreter yeah. would say, no, but the darkness is the devil and he separated mm -hmm. Jesus from the devil. You know, yeah. you can dangerous. Get, yes, you into dangerous into, territory there. Yes. So that just makes me think of how important, you know, how to interpret the Bible correctly. Let the, let the Bible interpret itself. So, you know, let the clear verses explain the ones that are not clear. Yes. Instead of d making a whole doctrine on a verse that, you know, is not clear, rather let the rest of Scripture help you to understand that clear or that unclear verse. You know, I think that's a good principle. Yes, yes. And sometimes you might not find it in that very few verses. It might have to be the whole chapter or a few chapters that yes. you have to read or even uh, treading into uh, the other books of the Bible and see what they have to offer. So, so maybe we can, we can talk about now, Pastor Ezra brought it up just now about, um, you know, this understanding of the Trinity of the Godhead is it will remain somewhat of a mystery. I mean, this is God. Like, you know, even in our fundamental belief statement, it said that God is known through his self-revelation. Yes, yes. So, you know, I don't think that we would be able to fully explain exactly how all of this works. But what makes sense to me is what God has revealed is for us to, to engage with. What he hasn't revealed, well... You know, in eternity, maybe he will reveal more. Yes, yes. Um, but to, to base what we know of the Trinity on God's word um, and not speculate what, what hasn't been revealed. I, I'm not sure. Maybe you want to, we can speak about that. Is that a wise approach? For me, that seems to make sense that we, let's stick with what is revealed and try and make sense of it from the Bible. Um, and in our, and we've been blessed with the writings of Ellen White, mm -hmm. which can, help us, it illuminates the, the, the principles and the teachings of the Bible. Yeah. I think the, the you know, there's, there's, there's certain things that that's in the Bible. It's easy for me to believe because it's in the Bible. I can see it in the Bible, you know. Um, sometimes we, we impose things on the text and on the Bible, and it's really difficult to believe, mm. You know, um, but some somehow I feel that people like preferring going the difficult route, uh, or, or they just want to be different. You know, different, you know, thinking that they are right because they are going <laughs> against the stream. You know, um, which 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 is true for most cases. But what 
you are saying is that um, if something is clear, right? Um, it's it's you know if, if it's a thus say of the Lord, stick with it. Stick with. You have to reinvent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> hmm. But um, but I also think there, there's 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 um, maybe a secular um, explanation sometimes. You know, not that it's a perfect explanation. But when I think of, of my little boy or my daughter, and they, you know, um, we, they're at this age now where they, Jesus is God, and we 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 need to now explain something. You know, I often um, and, and you know it's not a perfect. I don't think it's perfect, but it makes sense to me, and I'm sure it makes sense to them. I say, okay, then now they need to know, okay, uh, speak to us today about the Godhead, you know? And, and then I say, okay, uh, think of water, think of ice, and think of steam, steam that comes out of the kettle, right? It's, it's, it's water, it's all three the same things, right? But they are different. But they're not. They they, they, they still essentially they still, the same. <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the core, they well, you know, it's the same thing. Would you know? So, so what I'm getting at is sometimes there is ways to understand it, right? Um, whether it's uh, perfect or not, <laughs> right? Yeah. But there are ways to understand it. But I, I, you know, we said this maybe in, in our previous conversation that the scripture was never intended. To explain God away, you know, uh, it was ex it, the scripture is there for our salvation, hmm. you know? and so it introduces God. It doesn't explain it everything about yeah. His existence. It says, In the beginning, Correct. God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in, even that, the very words you had there, "In the beginning, God." You know, the we were just speaking earlier of um, how will you know that person is correct in his interpretation or her interpretation. Um, many times we're still faced with traditionalism, where uh, even our interpretations, the translations mm -hmm. are still following traditional uh, writing, traditional uh, translation, and even traditional interpretation. Uh, just this very one, in the beginning, that's one of the uh, meanings to it. But another meaning to it is uh, that word is rosh. You know, it's a beroshi, beroshi, uh, which means in the head or the headpiece of God created he the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Okay. So if he has it already created in his head, all he needs to do now is breathe. Okay. So that could also make sense in the context as well. In the context, yes. In the but second verse is... <laughs> yes, but fortunately what we had here, we said uh, God is Elohim. And we said it, it is plural. And then 26, as you mentioned earlier, 26 would then just clarify it. And God said, let us make man in our image. So there we have an answer to Elohim. Elohim is then in the plural form. Yes. Also think of the Genesis 11. Yes. Um, where they were building the Tower of Babel. And let's see... Where that verse is, um, it says, let us yes. uh, go down. Do you know where that verse is? Yes, I know it's uh, chapter 11. Verse 7, God verse seven. Said, thank you. Hmm. Come, let us go down. Come, let us go down. So uh, again, there, there's a, it doesn't define the, the, the Trinity, but defines, this, it's plural, let us. Yes, there's more than us. one. Part of the Godhead. Correct. Also think of Isaiah 6 verse 8, I think it is, where Isaiah um, is responding to the call. Let's maybe just yes, go let's there. go to it. It's always good to go through it. And you know we have looked at it. So this is when Isaiah was called as a prophet. Um, and it says here in the New King James Version, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Mm. There it is again. Then I said, Here am I, send me. Okay. Yes, yes. I think we have one in Revelation as well. Um, it would still not point to three. Uh, that should be Revelation chapter 6. I think it would be the last verse, verse 17, where they will call on the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and 
hide them from the one who sits on the throne. And verse 17 says, for the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to stand. So there is the capital T, H-E-I-R. Uh, initially they had it as a, a small letter, but then I have uh, communicated with them and I told them that should be capital mm. because it's the wrath of the triune yeah. God. So I'm happy they made that change. <laughs> what translation do you use just out of just oh, as a I, side note? I use the New American Standard Bible, the 2021. Okay. So this one just came out. Okay. Um, so it's, it's a more good edition. <laughs> <laughs> it's updated also yes. with the. Um, it uh, it is gender uh, sorry gender sensitive, where uh, there would be where females are not neglected, and uh, where the context would allow for the feminine side as well. Okay. But it stays true to the original it language. It would stay true to the original okay. uh, word for word, yes. So how do we make sense of, you know, we see definitely there's, there's more than one member of the Godhead. I mean, mm. by all these let us, let us. Yes. Um, how, how can we know that there is three in the Godhead and not two, for example? Oh, Pastor Greek, yeah, with the Old Testament it is really difficult for us to prove the Trinity in the Old Testament. Um, the New Testament will give us the answer. The, the, I wouldn't say that the entire Old Testament uh, would not bring it out. There is a section, and I will bring it out now. There, from the book of Isaiah, this prophet was certainly enlightened. Uh, the first one is Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. And here we begin to see that there are three. Um, Isaiah 42, 1 says, Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. Is that Jesus? Yes. Okay, let us let me not interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Right, it says, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. So the I is with reference to the Father. Yes, I my, see, I see. <laughs> my spirit here is the Holy Spirit. I've put my spirit upon him. And there you have that third person mm -hmm. who is Jesus. Uh, because this is the promise concerning his servant. This is the section that deals with his servant. The second we, one we have is Isaiah 48, verse 16, and it says, Come near to me, listen to this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. From the time it took place I was there. And now the Lord God, the Lord God, has sent me and his Spirit. So now you have the Lord God, with reference here as the Father, sent me, that is Jesus Christ, and his Spirit. Mm. There you have yes. three members referred yes. to. Mm. And then I'll take one more, which I think is perhaps the, I wouldn't say it's the only three, it's Isaiah 61, verse 1. Um, I think I, I've been trying to find more of these. Uh, but the very limited, Isaiah 61 verse 1, is Jesus is speaking. And this is where he was preaching yes. in the book of Luke, we read about Luke it. Luke chapter 4. Yes, Luke 4. It says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. He has, broken me, it was bro he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to captives and freedom to prisoners. So you have the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, of the Lord, that is God, the Lord God, the Father, uh, is upon me, Again. that is Jesus. Okay. Right. So we have then three members referred to, but uh, I find it difficult, uh, really, I cannot find it in other books of the Old Testament, uh, except here in Isaiah. I think there might be a fourth one in Isaiah 58. Nevertheless, 
here we see that they are three, but uh, this, these are the only ones we have. So if I'm understanding what you're saying is that the Old Testament certainly allows for it because it's, it's saying let us, there's that plurality, there's indication like these verses in Isaiah there, you can, you can pick up the, the three members, or the three persons of the Godhead, but the, Isaiah, the, but the New Testament, sorry, brings it out more fully, Correct. it would seem. To clarify it, yes. Okay. Do you want to maybe share with us some, some important New Testament um, examples of where this is brought out very well? Well, I, I think uh, one that we have, uh, that would have been the best one to describe okay. the Trinity. Uh, first of all, we use the word Trinity. We, uh, I don't think Adventists have a problem with it because it's basically tri, which is three, and the unity. Mm -hmm. They are one, mm -hmm. the tri-unity of God, yes. Uh, if anyone has a problem with the term Trinity, uh, then they have to find problems with the other terms that we also use that are not in the Bible. Um, I know I met with, with uh, some of these men who, who really uh, discard the idea, the belief of the triune God and so on, uh, and especially the term Trinity, because they claim it is Catholic. Now, if it is Catholic, uh, and these people were reading to me from, they were reading texts of scripture to me from the, the King James Version. Now, if they were against uh, that and opposing the idea of the term Trinity, then they should then also oppose the reading in Acts chapter 12, because um, it's Acts chapter 12, and verse 4, it says, um, when he had arrested him, he put him in prison, turning him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending only after the Passover to bring him before the people. After the Passover, but the King James says after Easter. Now, Easter would then also be Catholic. Why do they not... Uh, strike a balance here then. Uh, if, we have a, if they have a problem with Trinity that is non-exist, it doesn't exist in the scripture, the term, but here we have a problem with a term existing in scripture, but they don't have a problem with that. And, and interestingly, we had a, just on the 18th of September, if I remember the date correctly, we had a, an afternoon program where we we're also looking at um, the Trinity what is our understanding of the Trinity versus what does the Catholic Church understand of the Trinity? And although the terms are used, we have different understanding. Yes, yes. So for me, it's more about what do we mean by the terms than just the term itself. Exactly. You know, it's like, how, what do you understand? And so, yes, we might use the same term, but we don't understand it exactly the same way. Correct. But also to the point, there are phrases that we use that's not in the Bible. And there's not, know, uh, like uh, we use the word millennium. Millennium, yes. Uh, it's, it's not in the Bible, but we believe in a thousand years uh, period uh, that Christ will come and fetch his people. So, you know, and come back afterwards. But so there are words that, that's, you know, not being used, but yet we're okay with it. So, uh, are we at the point now where we are splitting hairs, you know, um, trying to sway this way or that way. But I would like to come back to your previous uh, uh, question maybe, and I would be so bold to, to say, you know, where um, the Trinity is more prominent or featured uh, at, uh, um, in the New Testament. Yes. Um, and and we, we, by this, we are not saying that the New Testament is more important than the Old Testament. Um, we need both. <laughs> we need both. We yes. believe in all of Scripture. Uh, we just yes. did that in the last our last conversation. The Holy Scriptures are old and New Testament. Old right. and New. It's, it's not just the one. Or, but I, I, I maybe just want to bring to view uh, Matthew 3. Okay, Matthew uh, 3. Verse, verse 13. It's, it's more it's an event that happened um, from verse 13, Matthew 3, verse 13, um, where Jesus has been um, baptized hmm. by John. And uh, the, the Bible uh, says here, um, from verse uh, 16 onwards, after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. Now, that's 
water. Um, Jesus was subdued under the water. Uh, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove. So there we've got Jesus. We've got the Spirit of God. And then, verse 7, it says, And behold, a voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The so Father. there we've got three people there. Yes. Um, uh, acting and, and clearly being seen. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we want it to we want to see it clearly like that. You know, we sometimes we, we think in pictures. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not always the case. But we thank the Lord for what He has given us. Yes, in, yes. In, in that. Yeah. Well, another one we have here is right in the book of Matthew again in Matthew twenty eight. And it would be the last two verses of twenty eight. Mm -hmm where Jesus spoke to them and he said, all authority has been given to me on, in heaven and on earth. And he says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Then with this participle, baptizing them in the name of the Father mm. and the Son mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then teaching them to follow all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. So here you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, one that I, um, I found interesting here in this very text, that he actually wanted them to baptize uh, the folk in the name of the Father. One name. Yeah, and that, that's correct. The name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he, the most sacred name is the name Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the way I understand Christ here, he's saying, Go ye therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name, as we would say, you know, when you baptize some, I now baptize you in the name Jehovah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because these are only titles. Of Father, Jehovah. Yes, of Jehovah. <laughs> That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, no. But there are three, we, you know, and... Uh, I personally uh, tried to go through the New Testament to see where can I find the triune God, and I so far I've found 51 references. Okay, of, where, where, where they're the mentioned three. together. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And then I think I found close to 20 where you had the Father and the Holy Spirit, and another 20 of the Father and the Son, and then the Son and uh, the Holy Spirit. So maybe let's ask, where, where can we get hold of this study? Well, I brought it along. I brought a copy yeah. for both of you of the book on uh, Is the Holy Spirit yeah. God? Yes. Thank so, you. So, you so Pastor, what, what I'm getting is that there's ample reason for us to feel relaxed in the knowledge of the Holy, Spirit, uh, Holy Trinity. Yes, there's no, no, no difficulty in that. The New Testament is as clear, as someone said, as, as clear as the nose on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so the, that is definitely clear in the New Testament that there are three members, and here you're speaking of three members in terms of equality. Um, and I think for that reason, I would just like to read this, if you don't sure. mind, and that's Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. It's one that you are accustomed to. Um, mm. You know this one very well, where the first word, uh, you know, they, the Jews call it the Shema. Mm -hmm. So the word Shema means to obey, but it also means to hear. So in this case, the Bible has hear, O Israel. Well, like obey, O Israel. Yes, obey, O Israel okay. at the same time. Yes. It says the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. So if you uh, translate it directly from the Hebrew, you will then follow these words here, O Israel. Jehovah, our Elohim, is one Jehovah. Okay. That is interesting. Elohim is the plural form the plural of God. Form, yes. And is one Jehovah. One Jehovah. In other words, all three would then be with reference to Jehovah. Yo, can you just repeat that one again in the, the oh. Hebrew, how it would how right. it read? Here, O Israel, Jehovah, our Elohim is one Jehovah. So let me ask you, the, the word Jehovah, is that in a singular form? Yes, that would be singular, yes. Okay. And that's the, what is known as the tetragrammaton, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the most sacred name of God, where the Jews would not then Sacred. read it. 
and they would rather read Adonai, which is Lord, in terms of respect for the name mm. of God. Um, I think I have three references there. Uh, the first reference would be Genesis 15, um, where we now see that God is also Lord. Um, Genesis 15 and verse, sorry, I'm in Exodus. It is Genesis 15 and verse 2. And Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me since I'm childless? And the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. So there he refers to the father as Lord God. So he says, Jehovah Elohim, right? And then if we go to the book of Luke, go to the book of Luke, and it should be, sorry, I think it is, I might be wrong, it could be John. Let me just try sure. as one of the two. <laughs> Um, John 20, and we read, you remember the one with, with Thomas? Oh, uh, yes. And then uh, verse, let me just get the right one here, yeah. where he said, 24, yes, in verse 28, Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now here we have Jesus now, uh, where it's not with reference to the Father. He says, he refers to him, my Lord and my God. Mm -hmm. So in, he's both Jehovah, but he's also Elohim. He belongs to the Elohim family, this plural family. And then I have one in the book and of Jesus Luke. Jesus didn't object there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus didn't object. No, he would not because John 1 verse 18 clarifies it. Mm -hmm. So in the book of Luke, chapter 1. Um, I see where we're going now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Luke 1, and we are in verse 67. 66 first verse reads, or it says, All who heard them kept them in mind, saying, What then will this child turn out to be? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. Here we have the Holy Spirit as Lord and as God. The Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. And if anybody disputes that this is the Holy Spirit, then I have to go back to Psalm 90, 95 to confirm that we're speaking of the Holy Spirit here uh, as God and also as Jehovah and also as our Creator. You know, many times the Holy Spirit is just sidelined, is just seen as a spirit, uh, and that is not, He's a person indeed. Um, 95, and I read from verse 6. It says, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let us kneel before, it says Jehovah, our maker. For he is our God. He's now our Elohim. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day of Massa in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test, they tested me, though they had seen my work. For 40 years I was disgusted with that generation and said, They are a people who err in their heart, and they do not know my ways. Therefore I swore in my anger, they certainly shall not enter my rest. And there it's as clear as daylight that the Holy Spirit is being spoken of. He says, it says, let's kneel before the Lord our Maker, He is our God, we are the people of his pasture. Now, it says, uh, and, the sh and the sheep of his hand, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And where did we get that reference? And as we said, we, we do take, we compare scripture with scripture, and it's from the book of Hebrews, right? Six. Hebrews chapter 3, three. and from verse 7. Okay. 
And here the whole, the (laughs) entire Old Testament is quoted here. It says, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. Yeah, he's still speaking, the Holy Spirit. As on the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years, therefore I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they did not know my ways. Mm -hmm. So there we have the Holy Spirit also as Lord, as God, a person indeed. So all three have been referred to in the same way in those examples. Correct. As Lord and as God, because they are the Elohim family. And they all, I'm thinking of Matthew 28, you're saying the name Jehovah, they're all part of that family name. That's correct, because here the name is is called Jehovah here. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Welcome. Um, Maybe as we wrap up, how have... How has this been a blessing to you? Like what encouragement, what spiritual encouragement can we, can we gather from this, our, our teaching, what we believe on the Trinity? Like yes. what, what spiritual upliftment can we gain from this understanding? Yes, I know first of all that the, uh, uh, as the Apostle Paul says, that it's the mystery of godliness. He says it's, it's, it's really a mystery because we cannot really clearly understand how these three work, how they operate, their economic functions, and so on. We do not know much, but we only have what has been made available to us. Uh, And it's amazing how we then see the works of the triune God and how they performed in the Old Testament and in the New and today in the lives of men and women. Uh, taking it from Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit then worked through all those people, and I think it was 3,000 people that came to repentance. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, the Apostle Paul carried it on, where they met some of these uh, disciples of John, and they didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. We asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? They said, we didn't even know there's a Holy Spirit. Because they were not at Pentecost. That was the problem. And now he then baptized them again. We do not want to really see it as canceling the the first baptism because that was the baptism of confession and repentance. It was a greater revelation of God. Yes, yes, yes. And that was what John taught them. But now he says, man, you have to be baptized in the name of God. Of Jesus and the Holy Spirit you it says immediately after that he laid his hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit so from Pentecost onwards now we have been seeing the work of Christianity grow around the world and now as Ellen White states in the book Maranatha another Pentecost is coming mm. so so yes. first, the, the as we as we, as we just you know the, there's only benefit for the Trinity in our lives Certainly. Believing in God the Father, believing in God the Son, believing in God the Holy Spirit, it's only beneficial for us. We have, uh, am I right in saying, we have more to gain than believing and more to lose by not believing. That's true. It's really really a blessing, you know, that, and I, I love the fact, to be honest, Pastor, that I can't completely explain God. Mm-hmm. I love the fact. I love it. <laughs> you know, um, and 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 that's why I believe in the scriptures because of the high standard that it's sometimes above my pay grade. So I love the fact that I can't completely explain God. Mm-hmm. For I think you would s- cease being God to a certain degree if you can completely explain. But what I do know that God is love. Mm. And he's motivated by the love, and he wants to win us back. And he's given us his word. He's given us such a lot of evidence. Um, and Jesus said, "It is to your benefit that I go." <laughs> but then the then the uh, comforter will come. Comforter, comforter will come. We can we can come now, right? So it's to our mm. benefit what we have. Amen. And 
that's also what what speaks to me how how Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all involved in our salvation. Each yes. same mission, they're united with um, different functions in our salvation. And I think of what Steps to Christ, that first chapter, I think it is saying, um, motives stronger, talking of love, and agencies more powerful could never be brought into operation. Mm. You know, and in that paragraph, you see God the Father working God the Son, the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, the angels even ministering on our behalf. God has given us, He is working tirelessly for our salvation. Yes. And we can praise God for each person of the Godhead, what, what each is doing to save us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so, so maybe as we, as we just wrap up, um, Pastor Chalice, is there anything you want to share with um, your church family, Silverleaf Church, just as we, just an encouragement before we wrap up with prayer? Well, I think it, uh, it is, would be good for them, our church, to know that um, with reference to the Trinity or the triune God, uh, they need not have any concerns that it is not biblical. Uh, you can find other religions teach something also related to, to Trinity. They perhaps have three gods and they would then try and... We don't have three gods. Deuteronomy that I was supposed yeah. to read, I didn't read, but it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, right? Uh, Jehovah, our Elohim, is one Jehovah. Now, that text, um, we needed to explain a little yeah. more on it. Nevertheless, to our church family here, they must know that we have biblical evidence. And even though it is limited, we still have the evidence. Um, we, we cannot really go too far because Alan G. White says that the, the triune God is above discussion. Now we perhaps, I don't know, I don't think we are doing the wrong thing because we are at least quoting the scriptures. You didn't see us come with a little notepad or <laughs> things that we are quoting from. We're using the Bible for that matter. And uh, we would like to know more about the Trinity, but I think more will be revealed to us in the life to come. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we have for us and our children, uh, I think that is good enough. And be encouraged that we have the Trinity is taught in Scripture and what our church have been teaching for years is still true that the, there are three of them, these three are one, and also that the three of them are equal, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one is not above the other. Uh, Jesus has life that's unborrowed, underived, and original, and so does the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Chalice, Nicely Pastor Israel, thank you so much Thanks for so much. engaging in this conversation this afternoon. Um, yeah, I appreciate the time that we've been able to spend together. And I'd also like to thank you for, for watching and joining us as well for this I Believe podcast series. Before we end off, let us just pray together. I'll ask Pastor Chalice if he could close in prayer for us. Sure. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we have the privilege to just sit around this table and have our discussion on the Trinity. We know God is all wise, God is omnipresent, He is omnipotent, and we also know that He's really above discussion. But we would like to know more about Him. Hence, we are turning to the Scriptures mm. to find Him. And we know that we will if we continue to search. We pray that you will Bless our church members, bless our family here. May they continue to seek after you, and they will find you. And Lord, we know we're also looking forward to another Pentecost coming. And for this, we have to prepare our souls so that we can have a right standing with you and have the privilege to be saved into your kingdom one day. Thank you, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Until next time.
Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining us. And I'm sure you've got questions or even comments. Please feel free to send an email to the email below or reach out to us on any of our social media outlets. We are so, we are so glad to have you interact with us and we are praying for you as you discover what you believe.